Peace world, what's good? This is Y King. We in the building, Africa Town Media Studios here at the Black Dot Underground, Central District 206. And uh got a special guest, VIP, in the building with us today. Mr. Devon Pickett, you know, up and coming entrepreneur, business owner, leader in the community, man, and glad to have you here to be able to, you know, exchange some thoughts. No, I appreciate you having me too. Yes, sir. So today we're gonna be we, we're gonna be talking about black economic empowerment. You know, we had you know continuing on this 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 statistic that was broadcast through the Seattle Times that you know the median income of whites in Seattle is one hundred five thousand. They eating, and the median income is blacks is 42,500. And so this is just all related to the work that we've been doing with, you know, Africatown, the land trust to, you know, create spaces for people to live, have businesses and whatnot. And we're fortunate to have a, a, a new business owner in our community to come in and, and, and talk about that. But before we get into that, you know, let's get in a little bit into your, you know, your marathon and your journey so far. Like let, let, let people know a little bit about it. DP, DP. Yeah, so uh, my name is Devon, Devon Pickett. Um, local in the community, local in the area. Been uh, going to school in this area since I was really, really young. Um, but I'll say my marathon and my journey in a, in a nutshell has been a, a constant change of different things and, uh, you know, different experiences with different type of people. Um, so in a nutshell, like, I feel like I've transitioned from basketball to business, to being a father, a uh, family man, things of that nature. Um, so it's been an interesting ride. Man, just on the ascension, huh? Just just rising, you know, stepping to your to your greatness, man. It's good to, to witness that from, you know, young people in our community as well. Just being um being 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 present, embracing the struggle and, and, and keeping it moving and, and overcoming the obstacles. And, and speaking again about these obstacles, when we look at this this economic situation, you know, we grew up in the in the central district, different areas, but um, all this change that's happening, you know, there's all this money flowing, billions yeah. flowing in the area, but, you know, it's, it's this big gap. You know, yeah. what are your thoughts about, you know, that statistic? What is that, what is that, what do you think when you when you saw that? I immediately think, like I said earlier, we gotta just, we gotta start to create our own and empower our own. Uh, I feel like the ways that they set for us, it, it won't ever be enough, so we gotta, uh, we got to build our own. And, and a lot of that comes from like self-awareness. I mm -hmm. feel like that was a big part for me, just like embracing who I am, the culture I come from, and then uh, just trying to be as authentic as I can um, while, you know, blazing that trail, running my own marathon of what I want to uh, come to fruition, so to speak. Yeah, what do you think are some of the causes that, you know, it's not even half, you know, I mean, we, they had us at three-fifths of a man at one time. Now we had, like, what is it, like 40% of, you know, yeah. a buck, you know, they got a, you know, they got a buck oh five for every, you know, we got 42 cent. Yeah. And we trying to gamble. It's, it's, I think of it like, you know, there's like simple rules to the game of business or life or success that we, uh, a lot of us, we don't know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So whether that's in a book or however you formulate it, a uh, podcast or whatever the case may be, or like relationships, there's certain keys to like the game of business and life that it'll help you if you're, if you're able to uh, kind of unlock that and, you know. So in 12 years of school, they didn't give none of that game. Up. I don't remember getting none of that no, game. No, no, no. And that's another thing. Like, I, I feel like I have an interesting journey, too, because I went to college, you know what I mean? And I, I, I was one of those people where I thought college would get you this grand job, you know what I'm saying? But when I finished my degree and all that, like, I was at the same pay as, like, someone who just started off the street, you know? Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. That's a good. That's a good point because I do think you know when we talk about the solutions, one of the things that we really have to do is look at the economy when we're choosing, you know, what type of skills or even what type of business we're gonna start. Like, what is the market buying? You know, yeah. like, and yeah. where is it going? You yeah. know, and sometimes, you know, we may be operating off a model that's from 
you know, the 1950s, our grandparents just yeah, go to school and, and get a job, you yeah. know, and it's a different world out here, right? Yeah, it's it an automation. No <laughs> yeah, it don't work no more. So you got to be real careful in how you, what shots you pick, right? Yeah. We want to take high percentage shots, yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely. You're a shooter, you got to shoot. So to that point, though, like, so uh, when I went to Seattle U, uh, choosing a major was one of those things. It was kind of like a topic between me and my coach and my advisor for some time because I, I kept stressing that, like, I didn't want to be tied down to one subject. And I wanted it to be something that could really uh, benefit me in the long run. So I chose communication, and I think that that was uh, very beneficial for, like, business and just being a leader in the community and just where I see myself going ultimately. Yes, sir. And just to the point that you made about um, we have to make our own and build our own. You're not just talking about that. You're, you're doing that. You're a business owner in the community now, um, entrepreneur. Tell us about that part of the journey you know and, and tell us about the business and and yeah. how how you got there yeah so uh the business uh we're a third party authorized ship center um uh, we, we we send you can come send through all the four main carriers through our uh company which is uh ups fedex dhl and uh and uh us ups dhl fedex and uh ups i don't know why i keep forgetting that but um so it's that called the, it's called the postman. Yeah, and it's called the postman. My yeah, fault. Gotta, so, yeah, you gotta <laughs> state that. Nah, it's called the postman. Um, and we're we're in the midst of like expanding and working on a few things. So it's been going really well. But the journey overall, like I would say, has been uh, very eye opening. Um, it's one of those things where like at first it, it really showed me and my wife that like if you want to do something, you can make it happen. Um, Cause we started out with like issues of funding and trying to get loans through the bank and uh, all those things that majority of people feel like, uh, you know, kind of is a cake and a walk. But when you really take that walk, you, you really see how uh, cutthroat the business world mm -hmm. is and loans and people with money and how frugal they are with their money versus people that uh, don't have as much, but they're willing to give so much. Mm, wow. That's a, that's a powerful point. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, people really need to know. I mean, this is a it's a powerful story though too. One of the things, one of the principles that we highly value with you know with Africa Town is this you know the principle of of honoring the past and building the future. You know, or this principle of Sankofa, which means yeah. to to look back, to yeah. go back and get it. You know, and it's, the postman yeah. is something that's dear and represents that to to your own yeah. story. So the postman. Uh, it, it, we, we created a love and memory of my great grandfather, Jacques Chappelle. Uh, he lived to be 98 years old. He passed away the year we opened, uh, prior to us opening, but he passed away, um, was struggling from dementia. But we thought it would be really nice for us to open this store uh, in love and memory of him, um, too, because one is because he was a postman for 37 years in the Central District, um, already had like that story going for him. And then uh, two, it was something that we really wanted to like uh, create legacy and just build on legacy because my grandfather uh, raised five generations off of uh, 35th and Olive in the CD. So including me, my mom, my grandma and so on and so forth. So um, it was one of those things where it was very important to create something that was going to last and be a staple in the CD. Something that like, um, you know, was was commendable on, on all playing fields from the street people all the way up to like corporate um, just being able to be like that's a real solid move and to this point it's been very successful yeah. nah it's powerful because I mean when we really think about it you said he was a postman he was an employee of the US Postal Service yeah. for you know 37 years 37 years yeah. and now you taking the rock you taking the ball and, and, and moving it forward yeah. but not as an employee yeah. as an owner yeah. of a postal service yeah. and you're employing other people yeah. i mean that should not be you know glazed over that's you know that's a powerful story in itself too yeah no nah, i think it's a big thing i, I really do uh nip got a thing where he say uh, he he got a saying where he say moving forward with speed and that's just how i view it is like my grandfather already you know created this foundation for us um and then I'm just like adding to that because I believe in ancestry and all that stuff too. So I definitely feel a connection to like my past bloodline. heritage, yeah, in my bloodline. You know, everyone worded different, but yeah, that same thing. You know, like just uh, I feel like you, you, you know, each generation is supposed to get a little better. That's right. That's yeah. progress, right? And yeah. So you know, you're definitely moving that forward, and and there's many 
powerful stories in our families that you know came and migrated to the Seattle and you know in the city, and we should embrace those. We should definitely tap in and not tap out from that. You know, yeah. a lot of people feel like, oh well, you know, it's changed. We're not there. We should give it up. You know, yeah. but this is where our families put their blood, sweat, and tears and built something, and we should always, you know, treasure that, you yeah. know? And so I commend you yeah. for doing that, taking it to the next level and taking it into the future. Um, I know it's not all gravy, though. You know, yeah. you mentioned a little bit about, you know, some of the you, some of the challenges. Could you speak to some of the, you know, the bumps and the roads and the twists and turns in terms of getting to a place where you're now in your second year, right? Yeah. Cause uh, that's that's critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I, like, I always tell people I like to share my challenges cause I feel like people can relate to them more. Um, but I would say one challenge, I, I, I name a couple, but I would say one that just stands out to me is just like the beginning when you're first starting and you just have this doubt of like, is anyone even gonna come in here? You know, am I doing this right? Um, kind of like I, I picture, I play basketball, so I picture like when you first learn how to do a left hand layup or like, you first learn how to dribble with your left. You know, you kind of unsure, but as you keep doing it, it gets better and better. So, like, in our first months of being open, uh, you know, there was days where we made, like, you know, $25 or something, you know what I'm saying? And and, and those were, of course, lower than our projection. We didn't expect to make $25 in a day. But, you know, uh, taking the lumps as we did and being able to just stand firm and just keep working and – uh, learning really just always learning about the stuff you don't know you know um, as a small business is very beneficial um, I would say another thing <clears throat> that's been a challenge is like we're not, me and my me and my wife we're not really political like that we don't like to get in politics too much but uh, I feel like we're just immersed in it now you know what I mean it was like kind of inevitable that it would happen so we've dealt with a lot of uh we've dealt with a a, a, a feel of the CD that that uh, kind of people talk about as far as like we, we felt people uh, that feel like they're superior or like they kind of like, you know, racist type of things where they come in, they'll say things like, uh, I mean, I'm making a long story short and I could go all the way into detail, but we've had customers come in. One lady was like, uh, she was asking me, what's our markup? You know, and I was telling her, well, you wouldn't go to Starbucks and ask them how much they mark up their coffee, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or you wouldn't go to Safeway and ask them about how much they mark up the cheese, right. you know? You gotta be a wholesale buyer. so. She got, she was upset and da 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 da. And then she, I told her how much it was. And she was, uh, she was like, you know, this is basically, she ended up saying, there's, there's many reasons not to ship here. So me processing that, I'm, I'm wow. like, I'm, pro I'm, yeah, but I'm processing, I'm looking around. I'm the only one in there and I'm the owner. And I got, you know, I feel like I got a likable personality. You know what I'm saying? I kind of meet yeah. you where you're at. So I, I just was thinking like, there's nothing that she could be dealing with. Like, be, there's no reason she wouldn't ship here besides like the preconceived notions mm. of a thug, you right. know, from the 90s or like he got braids or, right. you know, chains. Um, so that type of thing uh, has been a challenge. But it's also like really made my, my, my purpose and my... Uh, everything more clear you know what i mean like i really embrace it now more than i did before and just uh like that's me like if anyone could do it i could do it so i just well, you know that's been one of the challenges though it's just uh man what was it like that. getting to that point of signing that lease man i, I you know i was so happy man <laughs> like i was happy you know what's crazy we signed the lease the day that my grandfather uh passed away wow. it was the day of his funeral and like that's uh nice. So it, it was really nice. I got a chance to go up there after we signed the lease. We signed it like an hour before the funeral. And uh, I got a chance to go up there when he at his funeral and just speak and just let him know like what, what all we had been working on and now it was all done. So it was, uh, you know, I felt alive, man. I felt like it was a new, a new opportunity. I felt like there was like a, a different way to eat, you know what I'm saying, rather than for where we come from, so. Yeah, you really, you know, you really embrace the community. Like, we follow your social media. You yeah. know, you're always taking the pictures of the community, letting yeah. the community see as people come in. Yeah. So, you know, that's 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 uh, becoming like a community pillar, a community institution so quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like, when they, when you got pure intentions, man, and it, you just, you, you really move that way and it shows, then it kind of just energy-wise, it happens that way, you know? Because I even, la I joke with some of the customers that first came in initially and they were kind of like, uh, oh, this is different from the post office and then like just won them over you know what i mean so just uh creating that uh sense of community and like so our motto is keeping communities connected mm. and uh so the whole idea behind that was like 
how do we how do we merge all these resources and people that we know you know because i went to rainer b so i got a, a a group of people i know from there that's meeting you and uh seattle you and you know meaning middle school and working in the school district and you know just all over the place like just so keeping communities connected was a good uh model and we've been able to do that from ages like you know middle school from like 10 all the way to like 90 some years old so yeah, that's great. Nice. That's great. And um, yeah, for people that don't know your other half, you know, um, she's also a community, not just, you know, the co-owner of the business with you yeah. and founder, but also an artist in the community, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's an artist in the community. She's done a, a couple big projects uh, and got a few she's working on now. Um, she's uh she doesn't really like she can she doesn't really like put it out there like that. But we've been working on putting it out there more so she can, you know kind of reap some more benefits from it, but she, she she's an artist for sure. And for those that know, that's Kiana. Yeah, Kiana Rose. Uh, that's Kiana Pickett, but she goes by Kiana Rose as her, uh, her art handle. Art. And the art's in the store too. So it's not just, you know, the mailboxes and the shipping. You also carry like gift products and different things like that, just yeah. so that people that haven't maybe been yet know what is what what they can get there. Yeah. So she her artwork is sold in there. Uh, we sell her artwork. She also does. Uh, um, uh, what is that um, design so she'll do like graphic artist design graphic design sorry yeah, yeah. yeah she do graphic design um we got packing supplies in there we do copy scan fax on-site notary i just saw a new book that i want to come through and get to the uh the a, a dear new, dear black boy that one yeah yeah that, we got uh, that's uh marcellus Bennett. right 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 yeah. right right, right yeah right. he's got some uh some program uh, we were looking into. My wife was kind of reading about it, but uh, she was telling me it's where basically they, they push for kids to use their imagination to write mm -hmm. books. Right. Um, I can't think That's of the name right That's a great thing, man. Literacy is, is, is key, man, writing your own history, um, which clearly you're doing. Let's get into some tech. Like, what are some of the technical challenges or things you had to learn about, like, you know, whether it's legal or accounting? I mean, reading leases and it's all this fine print. Like, how did you take on, you know, those challenges? Really, just like everything else, just one step at a time. There was a lot of stuff I, I don't, you know, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Stuff I still don't know that I just figure out on the go. Um, but I've really been able to utilize resources. People that, you know, uh, I consider mentors. I call them and say, hey, what do you think about this or mm -hmm. that? Um, but as far as accounting, like, uh, my wife, she's pretty much, she, 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 she does that in. I like to say I'm like the broad stroke, and she's like the details. Oh, man. Teamwork yeah. making the dream work, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. Um, what would you say are maybe three key lessons, you know, in the journey so far that you've, you've picked up? So, for one, like small business and being service-based is like you don't want to say no. Mm. You just you want to get it done, you know. Uh, there was a time early on where we were kind of like, oh, we don't do this or we don't do that. Mm -hmm. And it was like you would feel those every single time, you know what I mean? It's kind of like somebody, you know, you blowing your assignment in the game or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, just working on being that type of business that you do whatever they need as long as it's in your field, you know what I mean? It's in your reach. So uh, that was one thing. I mean, that's a powerful lesson, right? No, it to is. To say big. yes as much as you can, right? Yeah, yeah. And then just trying to find a balance where you don't, uh, it, you don't compensate too much for, you know, your needs and your projections and whatnot. Um, what would I say? Yeah, I would say like personality, small business personality is important. I realize mm -hmm. that with like employees and stuff, because that's been like one of the most challenging things as an owner and, and ultimately caused us to both have to go back into the store for some time because mm -hmm. we were out of the store for some months and uh, for about three months and just have employees in there only. But there was a, you know, just trying to duplicate that personality of the postman and what that feels like, because I like to tell people we're like a warm hug or like, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy, when you come in, it's like, mm. whatever you need, we gonna make sure to help you get that done, you know what I mean? Especially in something that's just so, uh, you know, like tedious and people don't really want to deal with mail and stuff like that. They're just like, can you help me out? I got to fax this or whatever. Right, right, right. So human resource management and like training and, and like you said, getting people to embrace the, the values yeah. of the business. Of the business. And I think it's important that just the fact that you can define your values. You know what your values are. Like the way yeah. you just expressed that, yeah. I think that's a valuable thing for entrepreneurs to understand. What is your identity as a business, as you're saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's important. Uh, to know like your identity as a business. So like even with employees, like 
I like to tell them, like, you know, when people come in within the first two, you know, two steps, you want to be like, hey, how's it going? What can I help you with? Even if you're helping someone in the line, you want to, I think of it like, you know, quarterbacking or running the PG on the hoop court. It's like, you got to be letting everybody know what's going on, making sure that they feel uh, acknowledged, you know? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, I think you being a point guard, you know, a successful one that, you know, a lot of people uh, know you you know that 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 you did work. Yeah. You know beyond you know beyond obstacles, and so does that help help you in business? This this the skills that you learned, you yeah. know, on the court. No, I would say like I, I definitely like uh, the marathon mindset. I picked that up from basketball. Just I literally after college in 2014, I trained for two years before getting a deal overseas, and I would train at LA Fitness and go to like Seattle U and then U Dub, you know, three times. A, Three times a uh, three times a day, sometimes just training, just so that I could actually get you know overseas. So basically, through that two years, it was a lot of like you know lack of money and like you know struggling resources and all that, kind of like going against the tide. And it just taught me that if you just keep working and keep working, you can make it happen. Um, now, at the end result, will it be add up to what you thought? Maybe not, but. But the lesson, but the lesson, the value, the is ethics, always you there. know, the principles that it, and the structure that it builds in you, yeah, how that helps you in your next stages of life, right? Yeah, I be really feeling like I could do whatever, and I like just saying it cliche, but I just know that just being realistic about something, as long as I'm, as long as I'm able to chisel it down and see a pathway, then I, I, I know I can make it happen. And um, what would you say, like one? thing that might have been, you know, if you were back at the beginning of this process of launching your first, you know, business mm -hmm. would have been most helpful to you? I would say like, uh, just basically the, f the, the, the way we exercise the funds, I would say, cause we started out with a certain amount of money and we bought some things that, and I think any business goes through this, but that you didn't need, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some things that, uh, took, eight months to sell and some things that you know went really fast so being able to chisel chisel it down and, and kind of have a precise inventory of what you need cool, yeah cool cool man um back to this statistic you know in seattle and like how you know the black community you know in the cd and the south end is being um moved out basically just yeah, pushed out displaced yeah. um but I think, you know, you know, we've been able to, you know, get some 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 traction of another way forward, you know, with, mm -hmm. you know, like the Liberty Bank building, mm -hmm. you know, that we, you know, um, that's there on 24th and Union and, and, and you opening your business and the other businesses down, down there. What's your vision for, you know, the future of the Central District, you know, uh, uh, here that you grew up in? So, like, uh, my vision is for... Uh like-minded like people like us to to continue to like put that message out that you know like we can do it and then we get a couple more that's on board and they open in the businesses so that we can essentially build build like the new central district community yeah. like build build with the builders you know what i mean yes sir um i feel like at this point we don't want to keep talking about you know the fact that they've already moved us out we already know that we need to work right. on how to get you know back into it so i i view it like for me personally, like my in my in our business, our, our vision is to open two more stores in, within the next two to three years. But we're already in talks with both locations and uh, basically both in the CD, so that wow. our, our whole idea is to cover the whole market share of shipping uh, in the CD, and then it'll also have our full business plan because this one's only like seventy percent of our business plan, so it'll have like. Uh, and probably 60%, but it'll have the whole business plan and it'll be, those would be like the more like the main stores will end up demising this one down to like uh, just mailboxes and something else. So like I view the CD like becoming more black ownership. That's um, great. Yeah, and I think being on more like on a known level, uh, you know, we got a couple people doing a couple different things yeah. that uh, a lot of them when I talk to them, it's like how do we just, get that to where we you know like like i said being a staple in the cd so right. just working with you know like-minded people that's great to hear um we're getting down to the end and you know i think 
again, you're not just dreaming, fantasizing, talking. A lot of people talk, but you're actually doing it. You've made it real. Bricks and mortar, go knock on the door, show up, and yeah. you know, you're open for business, man. So I know that's important to you is like being a, a model too, but being real, not just yeah. playing a role, like you know, yeah. you say a role model, but being a real model, being authentic to yourself, yeah. um, and, and other people that share the same struggle yeah. and, and, and path yeah and i really that's very very important to me so i'm glad you brought that up it's just uh just being authentic and being like really myself of the core and all the transitions i've been through and not trying to like shun out my past but also let my past be a part of my future type thing um and you know because when i was young i think about the many people i looked up to and a lot of them they weren't they didn't look how you know most business people look so i try to keep that in mind and just want people to know like you can really be yourself man you know as long as you're a good dude and you you you, you period with your intentions um and you got a vision and a plan it'll it'll work out that's great man it's been good solid you know honor to be in the you know uh uh in the studio yeah. uh, with you you know building that legacy I mean, a lot of our businesses struggle with scale. So the fact that you're already thinking about three locations, in, you know, in three years, I mean, that, that's, man, hats off, tip my crown to you. Yeah. Um, for the people, let them know where the, what too. the business is, where it's at, and uh, where they can find you online as well. Okay, so uh, the business is The Postman Seattle. Uh, you can find it at 1143 Martin Luther King Jr. Way, uh, Seattle, Washington, 98122. That's across the street from the Landmark Grocery Outlet right there and the cross streets of uh, MLK and Union. Um, and then also on social media, you can follow us on Instagram at the postman uh, underscore Seattle. And that's a wrap, y'all. Remember, the message of the day, tap in, don't tap out. Peace.